Well, here we are, another devotion. Sheila's going to read, and then I'm going to come talk about it. Well, we're both going to talk about it. It's about mountain moving faith today. Mm. So here we go. Here is Sheila. It's a good one. And this is from the Elevate the Day devotional. And Jennifer titled it, Are You Facing a Mountain? Our world continues to battle trials and challenges every day. It seems like we keep going around the same mountain. I'm reminded of the Israelites who were led out of bondage by Moses. 400 years they labored as slaves under Egyptian rule. Not long after their departure, they hit a roadblock. Well, more like a Red Sea block. They freaked out, cursed Moses, saying they should have never left Egypt. Imagine their surprise and sheer joy when God parted the Red Sea. But their joy didn't last. When food supplies ran low, they revolted against Moses and bemoaned their situation. So God sent manna, bread, from heaven to feed them each day. When they grew old, the complaint meter was off the charts. It took 40 years for these stiff-necked people to get to the promised land. It should have taken them 11 days. Yes, you heard that right, 11 days. What took so long? The answer is simple. Instead of praising God and being grateful, they grumbled and complained. When you complain, you remain. When you praise, you raise. And our scripture is Mark eleven twenty three. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Sheila and I went to Bible school and that was a foundational scripture. Remember, Sheila? Yes. And I'm so glad because when I met Sheila, I said, I'm going to get that woman. <laughs> that was my mountain, and I claimed it. <laughs> you know, it, I, it wasn't a name and claim it group, but it was uh-huh. definitely, you know, mm-hmm. use your faith, and but faith in God. Now, there's so much faith out there. What, what do you mean, Jim? There's so much faith out there. Oh, people have faith in their money. I mean, you mm. think about a billionaire that built a stadium to put a professional football team in that's now worth billions of dollars. They didn't have, they didn't have faith in God. I don't think. I mean, they told the city, I have faith that we can build this stadium and have a professional football team here and we can fill the stadium. It was all based on marketing, on fan base, on dollars. There's a lot of faith out there. There's faith in our 401ks. There's faith in our job. There's faith that we can get this done by our physical strength, by hard work. But today we're not talking about that. We're talking about faith in God and the power of our words. We can have faith in God, but we have to also speak it out because faith comes from, wait for it, you're waiting, hearing. (laughs) I wanted to make that impactful because faith comes from hearing, even the gospel of Jesus Christ. How can people have faith in Jesus Christ unless people hear? Unless they hear, they can't have faith in anything, and they have to hear about it. It's so important for us in these last days to be the purveyors of the gospel and share our testimony by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, they shall overcome. People gain faith by hearing you share your testimony, what God has done, not only in salvation, But there's so many times where Sheila and I stopped and believed for something. I remember before we had our home, before we moved, we were in a little small square footage house in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Had a new baby. Sheila had had two kids that I adopted. We married. We're a family together in that small house. And we wrote down and began to say, we will have a house like this with God's help. And God did it. And 17 years ago, Sheila helped me write the book, Helping Public Schools. And on the very last page, before we went to press, the Holy Spirit stopped and said, declare this, write this down. Just like Jesus, when he spoke to the fig tree, we spoke and we wrote down, there shall be chaplains in America's public schools. And 17 years later, there's a great movement 
three states have passed the bill. People are putting chaplains in schools. There's, they're not waiting for legislation. They're realizing schools need help. And the only area in the United States, public servants that have not had a chaplain are teachers, staff, custodians, and students. So there is a move of God, but we declared it. Whatever it is in your life today that you're saying, God, I believe you've put this in my heart. Well, then put faith in God, write it down, begin to speak it, and then decree it. But come in agreement with somebody. The power of agreement. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God and the power of agreement and declaring it. When you were saying that, I was thinking about when we speak something, we our own ears hear it. It's so important to speak what we believe, speak what we want. Don't speak what we actually see mm -hmm. if we're facing a mountain. And I was thinking about a mountain. You know, when we're facing a mountain, y'all, that's all you see. It's huge. It's big. It surrounds you. You're consumed with it. And it is so hard to push back from looking at the mountain and look at the provider, mm -hmm. to look at the conqueror, to look at the victorious one, the one that's going to help us get through it. Your victory is on the other side of that mountain. By ourselves, we don't have a chance, but with God, we cannot fail. If we look at the mountain, the bigger it becomes. Mm -hmm. But the more we look at God, the bigger he becomes and the smaller the mountain becomes. I heard a guy say in a sermon the other day, stop looking at God through your giant. Start looking at your giant through your God. We can look at the problem or we can look at the provider. It's our choice. And when we start looking at the provider, when we start looking at God, we'll start spending time with him. We'll start praising him right in the midst of all of whatever we're going through. We'll start keeping our eyes on him, speaking his word. And in Romans 8, 37, it says, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. You can conquer that mountain, y'all. You can conquer it, but we can't do it by looking at that mountain. We have to conquer it by looking at the one that can help us through it, and that's God. So what is the giant in your life today? Mm. Is it pain? Is it hurt? Is it finances? There are thousands and thousands of things that we can say right now that can be a giant in your life. Whatever the problem is that you're facing, it is possible to come down. That mountain can be removed. The Word says, with the faith of the grain of a mustard seed. That's just a tiny bit of faith, y'all. Let's stop looking at those mountains. Let's start looking at that provider, the God that can help us get over that mountain. And let's become victorious because that's what he wants for us. You may have something more to say about this, Sheila. But one thing that we've noticed in Sheila going through her health issue, she doesn't say my cancer. No. Or if you're out there saying my addiction. No, it's not my I think I've shared this story before. There was a famous actor in the Dukes of Hazard, And I met him at a trade show. And he was talking about, well, my son's always going to be addicted. My son is just a drug addict. Mm -hmm. My son, and he said it about four times. I said, man, why why are you doing that to your son? And he said, what? I didn't give him any drugs. And he said, I, 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 didn't, I didn't do that. And I said, no, no, what you just said. I said, you're the dad, and you're proclaiming that over him? He said, I've never proclaimed that. He started doing drugs on his own. He, he's his own addict. I said, you just did it again. He said, what? I said, you're decreeing something over your son. And he said, I'm not. I, I'm just telling you what he is. I said, why don't you say that he's free from drugs? Well, he's not. I said, well, you just did it again. I said, proclaim. Faith calls the things that are not as though they are. It doesn't deny something. I'm not telling you tell he's not, but I am saying by faith. It was less than a year later, Sheila. We came down to Georgia where he lived, and I happened to call him, and he said, oh, Jim, I'm so glad you called. I want to buy you a lunch. Sheila, remember going? Oh, yeah. I'm not going to say who it was. And we went to lunch, and he began to thank me. I said, what for? He said, my son's drug-free. I said, well, we said, oh, yeah, I remember we said that. He goes, no, he's drug-free. I said, I know, we said that. He goes, no, he's drug-free. I said, what do you mean? He said, I came back, and I repented to him, and I just started mentoring him and started seeing him as addiction-free, as drug-free. And he said, he is free. He's not using anymore anything. I said, wow, that's great. Words are powerful. When we call something, it's my addiction or my pain or my grief. And my, we're holding on to it. Let's not hold on to the mountain. 
let's take it away a shovel full at a time. And how we start that is simply saying, I'm debt free. I'm cancer free. I'm addiction free. When we say that in faith with knowing God's help, God is pleased. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. I remember when my son was a teenager. You've got to remember, y'all, that he went through a house burning down, business burning down. His dad died. Then I moved him halfway across the United States, away from all of his friends and family. He went through some even more traumatic trials after that, a real good close friend dying literally in their presence. They, he went through a lot of trauma. And so he was really struggling and going through a lot. And the Lord told me one day, I want you to stop seeing him from what you see in front of you. And I want you to start seeing him the way you saw him before all the trauma. And I went, whoa. Because when I began doing that, y'all, my actions started changing. My words started changing. How I reacted and talked to people about him and to him changed. Y'all, when we focus on the good things about it, our whole attitude changes, our whole perspective changes, and how we handle it changes. Wow, Sheila, that's so good. We're going to end with some scriptures here. We know, already know in Mark eleven twenty three 23 and 20, 24, speak to the mountain. In Matthew 17, he says, because of the littleness of your faith for truly i say to you if you have faith the size of a mustard seed mm -hmm. now he's talking about the tiny faith just even the faith of a mustard seed you just gotta have faith to get it started in matthew 21 he said unto them truly i say to you if you have faith and do not doubt you will not only do what was done to the fig tree but even if you say to this mountain be taken up and cast into the sea there's a lot of scriptures about faith I encourage you all, let's have a faith week. Mm. If you're going through something at work, you're going through something through your family, you're going through something financially, speak to the mountain and then back away and look at the mountain maker mm -hmm. and say, wow, because God is awesome. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And when you know that God is bigger than any mountain and you're on his team, a shovel full at a time, the mountain will be removed. And it starts with your words. Mm -hmm. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you that you give us a full book of revelation, mm -hmm. of truth. And you already proved by faith that Jesus Christ, your only begotten son, died for our sins. And we accept that by faith that we're saved. Now, we ask by the power of the Holy Spirit to help us this week to have a week full of faith in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Y'all have a good day.